Greg Maddox is widely regarded as one of the greatest pitchers of all time. He is ranked 27th on the all-time war leaderboard, 7th among pitchers according to Baseball Reference. He is on a list that consists of players like Barry Bonds, Babe Ruth, Walter Johnson, and Tom Seaver among other all-time greats. His ability to use his finesse and pinpoint location led him to win 4 Cy Young Awards in a row and take home 4 ERA titles, 3 of which came in consecutive seasons. To go along with his absurd pitching abilities, he was also an extremely talented fielder winning 18 gold gloves throughout his career, the most of any player in the history of the game. Wow. With that being said, today we're going to focus in on one particular season, a year that Greg Maddox took his pitching to unreal heights. 1995 was arguably his best season of his career. Having already played eight full seasons in the big leagues, Maddox had already established himself as one of the game's best. He was coming off the season in which he won his third straight Cy Young Award in 1994, along with winning the gold glove and finishing fifth in MVP voting. He accomplished all of this in a season that ended prematurely in August because of a player strike. The strike carried over into early April of 1995. After the work stoppage came to a close, Greg Maddox took his game to a new level. The 1995 pitching leaderboard looks like a Greg Maddox fan page. He led the league in war, ERA, ERA+, FIP, win-loss percentage, complete games, walks per nine, hits per nine, and home runs per nine, and tied Mike Mussina with 19 wins. Wow. There are even more stats, but I won't bore you with some of the weird ones like base out runs saved, which I have no idea what that even means. What are you, a moron? One of the most impressive things from Greg Maddox's 1995 was his ability to limit base runners, and he took it to the next level this year. His strikeout to walk ratio was 7.87, meaning that for every 7.87 strikeouts, he walked one hitter, and he struck out less than one batter per inning. So it wasn't as if he was making up for a bunch of walks with a lot of strikeouts. Greg Maddox posted an ERA under 2 for the first time in his career the year prior in 1994 and was able to do it again at a historically great level in 1995, posting a 1.63 ERA in 209 2 thirds innings pitched, which led the league. To put that into perspective, Greg Maddox's ERA was better than Walter Johnson's 1908, Cy Young's 1901, Zach Granke's 2015, and Shane Bieber's 2020 shortened season where he posted a 1.63 ERA. Remember how dominant he was in the 12 starts that year? Well, Maddox did even better than that, in more than double the sample size. To qualify for an ERA title, a pitcher must throw at least one inning per team game. So in most cases in modern baseball, that's 162 innings. Now obviously Shane Bieber didn't qualify for that, but the three other pitchers I mentioned did, and it's worth mentioning because there are pitchers with lower ERAs, but didn't meet the minimum number of innings pitched, namely relief pitchers. After 1920, Bob Gibson's 1.12 ERA is the only ERA lower than Greg Maddox's in 1995. It's also worth mentioning that Gibson's was accomplished with a higher mound and in the era of the pitcher. The higher mound contributed to a pitcher's advantage, and MLB lowered the mound following Gibson's dominant 1968 campaign. Greg Maddox's war for 1995 was 9.7, which not only led all MLB players, it was a full win higher than second place Randy Johnson, who won his first career Cy Young that year. For a modern comparison, Shohei Otani in 2022 as a pitcher finished 4th in Cy Young and put up his most dominant campaign yet as a pitcher. His war for that season came in considerably lower than Maddox's at 6.2. You really can't compare the two players, but it's crazy to see just how elite Maddox was in 1995. 3.5 war better than one of the most dominant and talented pitchers of modern baseball? That's absurd. The Atlanta Braves went into the postseason primed to make a run at the elusive World Series. In the first round, they matched up against Colorado, and while Maddox struggled with a 4.5 ERA in two starts, the Braves still managed to pull away and advance to the NLCS. The Braves then matched up against the Cincinnati Reds to fight for a World Series berth, and Maddox put up an incredible eight-inning start, allowing just one run and picking up the win. The Braves now advanced to play in their third World Series in five years. They were looking for their first win in 38 years, as they had finished runner-up in both the 1991 and 93 campaigns. The 1994 World Series was cancelled due to the strike, so it's plausible that the Braves could have appeared in another World Series had the postseason not been cancelled. Regardless of that outcome, the Braves were now matching up against the formerly known Cleveland Indians in hopes of winning it all. In two World Series starts, Greg Maddox threw a complete game and got through seven innings in the other, putting up a 2.25 ERA and guiding the Braves to their first World Series title since 1957. Tom Glavin may have won the series MVP, but Greg Maddox was the Braves MVP in 1995. After the season came to a close, there really wasn't a debate regarding who should take home the Cy Young Award. Let's take a look at his season as a whole. Like we mentioned earlier, Maddox led the league in what feels like every major category, excluding strikeouts. 
but who cares when you put up stats like this? A 1.63 ERA, 10 complete games with three of those being shutouts, a .811 whip, and a 260 ERA plus, meaning he was 160% better than the league average pitcher that year. Naturally, Greg Maddox took home the Cy Young in 1995, as well as winning a gold glove and finishing third in MVP voting. Which, if this were to be voted on again today, with all that we know about war, FIP, and other stats that tell the full story of a player's season, I believe that Greg Maddox had an MVP caliber season. And that's saying something coming from someone who doesn't believe that pitchers should be able to win the MVP. It's just that in 1995, Greg Maddox was far and away the most dominant pitcher. And you can make the case that he was even more valuable than position players who play every single game, as opposed to every five. Let me know in the comments down below if you all learned something new today. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.